Gaming Geek here with another Kickstarter video. This time it is Printable Scenery's Shadow Fay Kickstarter. This is 3D printable terrain. A lot of it is modular ruins, which I like a lot. And Printable Scenery did send me these already printed models so that I can show them to you. I painted them myself and in fact at the end of the video I do have a short painting tutorial that follows my basic color scheme and technique that I use for much of my other terrain. So check that out at the end of the video if you want to see how to paint these models and it is super quick, super easy to do. This model over here is the rickety lodgings and actually it does not have the lowest level which in, um, includes some stairs but as you can see here because everything is modular and you can move these around and stack them differently that actually isn't a problem and that is one of my favorite things about this line is that because it is modular you can sort of add and subtract what you want out of this terrain which I think is awesome. In fact one of the things that I like doing is actually fielding ruined buildings rather than intact ones because with skirmishes I can actually see through or move my models through ruins a lot more easily than intact buildings. So for example this rickety lodgings here uh, is an excellent way to just have some scaffolding to have some height for your miniatures to be able to rain down on top of other models that are on the field. And that's a little bit harder to do when you just have buildings, intact buildings, because it's harder to be able to move through the buildings or to be able to climb in and shoot. Whereas with ruins, you can position your miniatures anywhere that you want. And so that's why I actually prefer to use ruined buildings. And this is a great set in order to do that. And then over here is the Hermit's Tower. And I just love how this design came out. And again, how you can remove this top part and just have that top part and just check out all of the detail that's found in this model. This is one of my favorite towers, ruined towers, that Printable Scenery has produced. And in fact, this ruined tower is going to be one of the GGGGs for November of 2020. At the end of every month, Bob the Beholder picks one of my Patreon supporters in order to receive a gratitude gift thanking them for the support that they show this channel. For this month of November of 2020, we have three GGGGs and this is one of them. If you want to see some of my other ones, check out my previous videos as they are Kickstarter pledges for the other Kickstarter videos that I've done. But I'm going to take you over to the computer and we're going to look at what is available in the Kickstarter, what has been unlocked, and if it is past the end of the Kickstarter, go ahead and use the link below as I have an affiliate link that will take you to be able to late pledge for this awesome deal. I do get a kickback from that, so please use that link and that helps out my channel as well. But let's go ahead and go over to the computer and check out the Kickstarter campaign. So here's the Kickstarter page for Shadow Fay, and if you watch the video, it's a take off of Stranger Things. The Even the music day. is a little bit like that. So you can watch that later. By the time I post this video, there will be about two weeks left and should be over $100,000 in pledges. So they have unlocked a number of cool additional items. Yeah, right now they have 20 free stretch goals that have been unlocked. And let's go ahead and look at the pledge levels. So pretty much there are only three pledge levels and one is for the Shadow Fey Ruins, the other one for the Shadow Fey Wilds, and then the All In. And if you consider that the Wilds and the Ruins are about 62 US and the All In is 104, that's about a $20 savings if you go all in. So if you really like the set, I think that is the better deal. But if for whatever reason you only want the ruins or you only want the wilds, then you can go that route as well. And this is a pretty big discount based off of if you were to buy these individually after the Kickstarter is over. So the Kickstarters tend to be a pretty good deal. So let's go ahead and see what is available. And like I said, I think these ruins look really awesome. And this is unique in the sense that they are modular and that you can stack them like this. Although I, I'm not sure, but I don't think 
for example, that you can get rid of that bottom, this uh, second layer, and put this top layer directly on top of this base layer. Uh, so I don't think it's modular in that sense that you can interchange the pieces, but just modular in the sense that you can choose to just keep it, you know, these two levels or add uh, this third and fourth level. And then the wilds is more of an outdoor area with trees and this gate. Whereas obviously the ruins are what it sounds like, buildings. And here we have the tower as well as these ruined buildings, which I th think looks really cool. Again, the Hermit's Tower. And then the rickety lodgings. And like I mentioned before, I didn't receive this bottom foundation, but only the top three. But I think it looks fine with just the top three as well, showing that you can make it uh, stack to whatever height that you want and it still looks good. I really like these bridge spans and I think having this go across your gaming board would make it look really cool. I tend not to print out roads, but these ones, these ruins look pretty cool. So that might be a good addition as well to your wargaming table. And then the wilds pledge is again, like I mentioned, sort of this outdoor area and includes these caravan, this caravan wagon, as well as these tents. So you're receiving actually a miniature and this shadow gate. And this is probably um, what I'm most interested in from the wilds is these contorted trees. I really, if you haven't seen my video about what I consider to be the best 3D printed trees available, uh, it is from printable scenery go ahead and click up here to the right but i really like their trees a lot although i am a little bit concerned about how thin these are and whether or not they would break easily but we'll see so here are the stretch goals and they tend to alternate back and forth between adding more to the ruins versus the wilds and so the first unlock is this bell tower which i think looks really cool and I wonder if they are going to have this foliage be a part of the actual STL file. Um, they tend not to put foliage in there, but it, it looks like based off of the, this design, they will have that be a part of the STL file. Uh, I'm a little bit skeptical with how it would print with an overhang like this, but we'll see what the final designs might be. And then again, for the wilds, this is a Fey heart. This looks really cool. I think this haunted windmill would be an awesome piece on your gaming table. And then again, for the wilds, we have the witch's hovel and then these mausoleums, which are cool, a skull, and then the, an expansion to the bridge spans, uh, which are these ramps. And again, I, I love having sort of a bridge, a ruined bridge going across the table where you can have a lot of cover or height added to the um, skirmishes that you play. And then here's a throne, another gatehouse. Looks like you're doubling the number of what is in the base pledge at least, if not more. There's rivers here available. This nave looks really cool. It looks like it's multi-tiered, so I would really like that piece. I'm not 100% sure what this is. It's hard to tell how tall these trees are and what the scale is of this thing, but it looks like it's gonna be quite large, assuming that maybe this piece here would be one print, and you can really see, barely discern here, these cut marks. So my guess is, is that you would print out these pieces individually and then stick them together. So that would be intriguing to sort of have this, uh, as they're saying it, a gully. So I I'm a little bit intrigued, not 100% sure what that's going to look like at the end. This is what I really like though, these uh, graveyard walls. Again, I think this using this as scatter terrain in terms of the practicals of playing out fantasy skirmishes 
having scattered terrain many times is more helpful than having whole buildings because whole buildings, as I mentioned before, tend to just block line of sight and it isn't as interactable, whereas having scattered terrain tends to be a little bit more helpful. Um, the gatehouse B doesn't look ruined. Um, it seems to be the intact version of gatehouse A which is the ruined version. So maybe it's a misnomer to call this ruined. And then there's a court entrance. And then again, uh, connecting spans for the bridge, which is something I will most likely print out. And then the dragon's grave, again, more scattered terrain, which I really appreciate and like. And you have this ruined chancel, again, uh, multi-tier, which I think is really cool. Uh, this is really interesting. I don't know what if I would really print it out, but you get a maze with hedges. Uh, these are the next couple of things that are going to unlock because the you receive a couple of files for the giants, and I'll show you that later if you're only in the all-in pledge. And here's a house that's actually a mimic, which I don't know. I'm not as interested in that. And here are some bases that you'll be able to print out inner sanctum and again we'll see if it goes beyond 100, 147,000. So here's the bonus item the giants that I was mentioning you're going to get three models which I think look relatively cool. Definitely would want to print these out on a resin printer although printable scenery did send me they did print out those skeletons on the spikes and it looks like it was printed on an FDM printer probably at point one and so it is, I do think it is possible, especially since these are larger scale, to print these out on FDM printers rather than using a resin printer. But because I have a resin printer, I would definitely print these out on my resin. And then, as always, all of their previous Kickstarters are available as add-ons. And again, if you are interested in any of the previous Kickstarter, it isn't the whole Kickstarter package but it isn't the all-in, but it is sort of the separate components. Not as good of a deal as if you would have gone in on the original Kickstarter, but still much better than if you were to buy these pieces individually. And so if you were always interested in getting one of the package deals, definitely grab them here. So for example, the Goblin Grotto was part of the Chlorhaven Kickstarter. I went all in on that. And so I received this as well as a bunch of other files. So that was an awesome deal for $100. So um, if you do like these files, getting in on the Kickstarter is always the best deal. But I am glad that they make these files available post Kickstarter. And this is a really good set, the Ruin Winterdale. I have this and I've printed out a couple of these files uh, because as I mentioned before, having the Ruin buildings I like better for actual gameplay mechanics see when this project is ending it is going to end on december 3rd but they always do have late pledges available for about a month after the pledge is over so definitely check that out as well so there you have it i think this kickstarter is an awesome deal there's already been a lot of great things that have been unlocked so you are going to be getting a really good deal if you jump on board with either of the pledge levels or going all in as I mentioned before, go ahead and stick around and check out my painting tutorial. Again, super easy, super fast to be able to paint these. And please like and subscribe to my channel. Go ahead and check out my Patreon page if you're interested in that. Otherwise, happy printing, happy painting, and happy gaming. We'll see you next time. I start off by spray priming all of the pieces, either this slate gray or this dark brown from Rust-Oleum uh, Camouflage. Both of these are pretty matte and I know that Krylon does have their version of Camouflage Brown as well so either one works fine. And after I spray paint all of those I grab my slate gray as well as my zinc. These are a dark and medium gray and I actually have to mix them together because one of them is too light and the other is too dark so I want a medium and I just do a dry brushing with this stiff horsehair brush over all of the stone.
And as you can tell here, because this is the medium dry brush, I'm putting actually quite a bit of paint on there to lighten all of the stones up. So I'm rubbing in the paint more vigorously than I'm going to with the top dry brush coat. And this is what it looks like. Now I'm just gonna grab the slate gray without mixing it. And this is a lighter gray. And this time I'm not pressing it in as vigorously because I only wanna get the top edges of the stones. So it's a fairly light dry brush compared to the first coat. And don't worry about getting the gray onto the wooden pieces because we're gonna paint over that later. So you don't have to worry too much about getting the gray paint on the wood. So this is where I'm gonna grab some burnt umber. Apple Barrel is pretty cheap craft paint. So any dark, the darkest brown that you can get. And I'm going to wet brush in all of the wooden parts that are on these pieces that I spray primed with the gray. And don't forget to get all of the wooden pieces as well as skulls that are at the base of the model and ropes as well. Next, I'm gonna grab this Georgia clay and work on the roof. And I am being pretty careful and using a pretty stiff brush so that I don't accidentally get the paint inside of the crevices because I want in between all of the roof tiles for the dark brown to show through. So I'm being pretty careful and you do need to put on a second coat because the undercoating is so dark. So here, after putting on the first coat, I'm gonna put a second coat on. And this is pretty much what it should look like after putting on a second coat. This is gonna be milk chocolate, a medium brown color, which I'm going to, again, just dry brush in the same way that I did with the gray. I'm doing all of the wooden pieces, the brown. And it's not gonna show up very well, but that's okay because this is the medium coat. And again, just like the medium gray, I'm pressing it in pretty hard. This is a honey brown or a lighter brown color. And this is where you have to be lighter with your touch because this is highlighting with just the dry brush here. And so I'm just pretty sparse and careful about putting on this top layer of brown. But I think if you are careful and not getting the paint too far into the recesses, it gives a really nice wood color. And if you go against the grain of the wood, you'll be able to just hit the highlights of the raised grain and always do the edges of the boards as well. And I think you get a really nice effect with all of the details that are shown here. I'm gonna grab some antique gold, but you can pick any uh, color that you want for the ropes that are on all of the pieces. And I just like this yellowish mustard color to go on the ropes. Now I'm gonna grab some hash shut copper from Citadel, but you can grab any metallic. You can do silver if you want. And I'm just coloring the stove pipe and that's the only metal that I have on here. You can go through and do all of the brads too, but uh, I just did the stove pipe. And again, here is some shots of the finished model. And as you can see here, with this really simple technique and very fast technique, you can paint up this terrain really easily and it turns out awesome looking. Here's the skeleton on the spike and I just used some light beige to dry brush that as well. So really nice models. I think these look great. Hopefully this painting tutorial is helpful for you and is able to get these models onto your gaming table. As always, like and subscribe and we will see you next time.